Hey everyone and welcome back to my studio. Today's video is just going to be a quick tutorial about how I currently draw flowers. Um, it's just yeah something very quick and simple to give you kind of the overall approach that I have to drawing any plant, any flower and yeah the steps that I take for flowers that I use in my typical portraits. Um, yeah, maybe you'll get some inspiration or new impulses um, or something. Yeah, let's get into the tutorial. And before we start with the drawing, I wanted to yeah show you some references of flowers or plants that I usually draw or that I love to draw. There is no perfect tutorial for exact steps on how to draw every flower, but um, there is a common theme along all the flowers that I draw. So let's start with this one, for example. When you have a reference picture of a flower, which I can really recommend, um, you should first, before you start drawing, observe the shape of the flower you're going to be drawing. So for peonies like this one, there's usually this main shape going on and then petals around the flower. That's how I would always approach a peony in case I don't have a reference. I will always make something like this and then petals to go around. There's something in the middle here and then the petals going around the flower. And this is the main structure of this kind of plant. And that's what you kind of need to have in the back of your head when you are drawing the flower or if you are making the first sketch layer in your drawing, you can kind of sketch the flower out like this. Whenever I do a portrait, I will have the kind of sketch for the portrait over here and then do some circles for the main flower shapes or the main flowers that I want to use and draw in some leaves to kind of to kind of suggest future me where I want the flowers to be. And then I will kind of do this sort of thing and then figure it out later in the line phase. And the same goes for any other plant that you would want to draw. Um, this peony right here has the same kind of structure to it. So we have a center bow, bubble, <laughs> whatever, the core, and then leaves around it. And depending on how big or how small you make the core, the more different the flower is going to look. And the same goes for any other plan that you want to draw. So you just have to look at the overall shape of the plant. So for this one, for example, we know it has this long stem and then this longish thing on top. And then we know there are leaves all around the plant and we can just kind of sketch this in. and. If I have this in the back of my head, I can always recreate it, but in a different way if I want. So I can do some kind of leaf like this over here and then something over here and so on. And then I can later on figure the plan out. Let's do another example. So this flower here has this main core and then these pointy leaves around it. And as soon as we have figured this out, we can draw this plant in any other variation and um, we just need to kind of understand the structure first and then go to the next step. When drawing flowers, like with everything else, I love to use some kind of desaturated pinkish tone. And when I use flowers, something that's very important to me and I think something that really helps with um, getting a very soft and beautiful effect is to kind of have thick lines like this and then have thinner soft lines in between to suggest the overall petal shape but also give it some kind of structure and um, make it more interesting and add more detail on without getting too bulky. So I do recommend a brush that has pen pressure to draw flowers like the Lowish Hard Round brush which is perfect for drying flowers like this one. So you can just fill them in like this and then draw the bowl shape over here and just kind of follow, follow the sketch. And 
If you are insecure in the beginning about the shape of your flowers, I don't see any problem with tracing over a photo like this with a very loose sketch and then hiding the photo and drawing in your own flower and keeping the reference on your phone or something and just looking to the reference whenever you feel like you need it. And using reference for flowers is very important because when you just go from your head and you don't have a lot of experience drawing flowers, your leaves or petals can get kind of repetitive. So it does help to kind of have another picture of a flower on the left um, or on your phone to kind of get some natural leaf variation in. So for example, we have this leaf that curves around like this and we could add something like this to our flower over here. So um, like this, for example. So we have some more interesting variation and the leaves or the petals don't look as boring. And that way you can, yeah, create your own, your own kind of flowers, if that makes sense. So you can start from using the overall shape from one and then mix and match your own preferred flowers and see what kind of petal formations work for you or what you really like about petals. The same goes for plants like this. You can always have another one as a reference and this one and then look how the petals or the leaves in this case, how the leaves are shaped and how the different variations of leaves look like and or what they look like. Um, if you just go from imagination, if you don't have a lot of practice, practice it can get kind of hard to get interesting variations but if you have a lot of reference to look at and work from and um, you can get these interesting shapes for example this one is something I really like in leaves or this one and then also something crazy like this and um, can be very interesting if you wouldn't have used a picture for reference you would kind of be like oh okay here's a leaf and then this, I mean, I'm guilty of this. Okay, so um, yeah, that's a tip I have for you. These are all kind of the same, but if you work with reference and use reference from your phone while you're drawing, you will be able to get more interesting shapes. Um, something else I wanted to talk about is the kind of inspiration that I've been looking at to develop my own kind of flower technique or style. And that's actually drawings of peony tattoos. And those are something I really enjoy looking at. And I really, yeah, enjoy the shape language of these. So um, if you feel like you are kind of bummed out about how to draw flowers, I can recommend looking at tattoos like this because they are really good about understanding shapes and drawing interesting petal shapes. Um, Let's let's kind of look at look at them and how they are built. We, we also have this kind of main shape over here, and then very beautiful stylized pattern petals over here. So if you are looking for how to stylize petals and flowers, um, it can help to look at tattoos and how tattoo artists do it because they are masters of stylization. So yeah, I can really recommend you to check drawings like this out and maybe integrate this kind of style into your drawing. Let's kind of work with all the things we've just learned and draw a quick peony. So let's hide the layers for now and start with the sketch. So I'm going to draw in the first kind of bowl over here and then shapes around her like this and then I will lower the opacity of the layer and start drawing in let's put it over here on top so we can still get some reference of petals but are free to work on our own drawing. So let's see. 
Um, let's just kind of go with the petals that this flower has, but make them very stylized and easy. So we have a petal, or maybe this is too thin. We have a petal on top over there. And then one coming up underneath. And then the swooshy one that's going on right there. And this goes for any other flower as well, like roses, for example. If you feel like you have understood the overall shape of roses, which roses do have a very distinctive shape to them. Um, if you feel like you have understood those, you can, if you still feel insecure about the stylization, just look at artists who do it very well. For example, tattoo artists are very good at stylizing roses and you just take some kind of inspiration from there and develop your own technique um, of how to stylize them and how you feel they look most beautiful to you and um, after all they are your flowers and they don't have to be perfectly realistic they can also just be your own version of a rose or your own version of a peony they don't have to look exactly like they do in real life so that's something to keep in mind um, let's start with the outer petals over here And yeah, with drawing a lot of flowers, I do draw a lot. So I do kind of have a lot of practice when it comes to that. And you will also develop your own technique and practice over time and will become very good at drawing flowers and will be able to draw them without even using any reference. So don't feel discouraged if you haven't figured them out right now. I actually struggled with drawing them a lot because I didn't try to stylize them. I just tried to copy an image and that's not how it works. And that's not something that works with my drawing style, if that makes sense. If you are someone who draws very realistically, drawing realistic flowers will help you a lot and will work with your style. But if you are someone who draws kind of cartoonish portraits or something, drawing perfectly realistic flowers won't really fit your style and that's something you have to keep in mind. Okay, we now have kind of most of the petal shapes figured out and I'm just going to add two or so leaves. And always keep in mind to have the line variation, so thick outlines and then thinner detail lines to kind of suggest the shape of the petals and the structure. So now we have two leaves and we're going to keep it at that, I guess. So let's hide this layer and this one as well. And I'm going to select around and invert the selection, make it slightly smaller and just kind of block in the color. And now what I will do is usually first, before I do anything, I will get a very soft airbrushy brush <laughs> and kind of go in like this and first make a gradient. So go dark inside and then softer and lighter on the outside. And you can also push it a little and go even lighter over here to just kind of suggest the overall coloration of the uh, flower and then I will make a multiply layer with one of the pinkish tones because now we have a lot of different saturation and darkness and brightness so a multiply layer is very easy to block in shape shades now and now you can just go along and shade your flower and I use different kind of colors for this so maybe something more desaturated and darker will work better and 
you can get kind of messy with this because you're going to make it very bright later on and turn the opacity of the layer down so you don't have to be perfectly neat with this one and then you can just kind of shade in suggest where the petals are overlapping each other um, so like this and because you have made the selection you won't be coloring out of the flower which would be super annoying so yeah that's nice um, like this and then I'll just turn down the opacity and you don't even see where I kind of went messy and you can do multiple shading passes if you want then I will add the other colors so I'll definitely do something kind of like yellowish for these palm things on the inside and then something very important that I wanted to add to this tutorial is the green in plants isn't really green for the most flowers that I draw so I will either use a very desaturated green like this but sometimes this is too much even though it's very desaturated if you want to create a very harmonious green for your flower you can just use a desaturated yellow and it will appear like a green but it will be closer to the other color so it will look nicer and that's something I've actually learned just one time someone said that to me and I was just very surprised because I thought oh that's green no actually it's a very desaturated yellow which is something very interesting and then for the last step for the flowers I usually go in with a, or if I have the time I go in with a very light pink and then kind of do these dots to I don't know maybe add more interest or these could be small water droplets or whatever you make of them but I think they look very cute and make the drawing more interesting and sometimes I even go in and kind of darken down this on the inside so it's darker than the rest of the flower and you you see that that it's the inside of the flower okay um what we also can do is kind of go in and color the lines um for flowers i really like to just leave the outside of the flower black so have everything inside the flower or every line inside the flower be colored in pink so like this and again this doesn't have to be perfect but I try to at least so like this so it has a very soft soft feel to it I guess and you can also go in and make it more saturated in the middle and yeah this is how I would draw a flower if I was to draw some kind of portrait and want to add some you can always make them more detailed or less detailed depending on what you want to go for but this is just a very quick version of the flowers that I would usually draw um, I hope this was helpful in any way um, let me know if you have any questions about flowers or about digital art and um, I am working on a video about my digital art tips more of a broad tip kind of video but I'm not finished with that one yet so I wanted to kind of push this small flower tutorial between so you still get some content and I have some more time to refine that other video okay yeah um, let me know what is your favorite flower and thank you so much for watching. I will be seeing you very soon in my next video. Bye!